Dominic from AskMeDIY.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a circuit breaker if one uh, needs replacement. Well, first thing you want to do, no matter, even if you've been in the panel before or whatever it may be, is turn the main breaker off. That, in this particular panel, this is the big one right here. If you look, it says 200, and that's because this panel is a 200 amp panel. Yours may be 150 or 100. In either case, it will be marked on the main breaker. When you turn that breaker off, it doesn't mean everything's dead in here. What it means is everything's dead in the house or the building that you're working on. Uh, you have your main leads that are coming in, and normally they come in directly from the, uh, the electric meter. Well, those leads, as I'll show you, are going to be live no matter what. They're going to stay live. So let me open this up and I'll show you what we're going to do. All right, well, as you can see, I went ahead and removed the rest of these screws. I got one left, but as I'm pulling that one last one out, and pretty much the whole time, I'm holding pressure on this because it's a little spring-loaded, and I don't want it to fall, and as when it's falling, it's hit the breakers and make a big mess and even pull some of the breakers out. So I'm just holding pressure on the last screw, and there's the last screw, and that's out. If all the screws are out, then I just grab the, the cover here and just pull away because we don't want it moving around and it's pretty heavy and we don't want it to fall. All right, there's the inside of our panel. All right, let me get you a close up there so we can see what, what we're doing. All right, well, I want to explain the panel to you first before we start getting into removing any of the breakers. Now, of course, these are all the breakers. These are all the breakers on the right side and the left side. And these are all the main wires going to it. These are the hot wires. These are the ones that you got to watch out for that you can get electrocuted on. But I want to show you that main breaker, which a lot of people make this mistake. They think just because we turned it off that everything's off in the panel. Well, that pretty much holds true from here down. That electric electricity is, not, is no longer being supplied to these breakers. However, Power is still being supplied to the main breaker. And if you look at these, these big puppies right here, well, those are still alive. These are coming right from the meter pan, you know, the, the meter that the uh, utility company uses to see how much electricity um, that you didn't use, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, and right here, this big, in this case, aluminum wire, well, this is a neutral wire. Well, from this wire and that wire, with these two, you're going to have 120 volts. With this one and this one, you're still going to have 120 volts. But if you use this one and that one together, and you're going to use a neutral, which would act as a ground, well, something like well, a ground and a neutral, it's kind of hard to explain. Well, now you're going to have 240 volts. So as most of us have been shocked before, you know, that's just, you know, right out of your, uh, your outlets of your house or playing with something with a switch or something. Basically, you're being shocked by this one and this one alone, which, again, like I told you, is 120 volts. But if you were to get shocked with both of these, well, chances are it's going to be picking your eyeballs up off the floor. So that's you got to be really careful on. So no matter what you do with this breaker, like I was saying, on or off, you still have power up there. So these, those bare lugs right there, well, that's live, and that's live. Touch one, not too bad. Touch both at the same time, like I said, you're going to have problems. All right, but anyway, right back down to our breaker. Well, as you can see, being back to the past, sorry, uh, I did leave this on. So this whole system is live because people in the, inside the house are watching TV and we don't want to interrupt them. What I'm going to do, let's just pick this one out because it's easier to see on the video. I'm just going to turn this one off. Now, by turning this off, what that means is that this wire that's going to the breaker is no longer supplying power. You know, I mean, just, that's just dead. Now, most breakers, and I mean by like 95%, you can just pull them right out, just like that. It just clips in. You know, if you can get a better look at it now. So, right here is a lock. Well, not a lock, you know, but a little, little tab where it locks in. And you look in the in, inside here, well, that's what you see is where it's going to clip right in. And here, well, this piece is connecting inside there, which is a buzz bar, which again is um, supplying 110 volts to it. On a 220 breaker, like see we have one, 
mm, on this side. Here's a 221. And I, if, I mean, if you look, it's kind of hard to distinguish on the video, but we have two main leads coming off of that, which basically what to get to 220, like I explained earlier, it's going to take in 120 from each buzz bar. So inside here, they crisscross, and that's how they're doing that. Okay, let's get back to the breaker. All right, you have a little screw that's holding that wire in. Now basically, all you have to do is unscrew that screw, and the wire is going to come out. So let me show you. For the time being, I went and put the breaker back in so I could uh, actually use one hand because I'm holding the video camera with the other. <laughs> um, just put the screwdriver into the screw there and just loosen it up a little bit. Like that. Nice and loose. Now that wire comes right out. Just like that. No big deal at all. And again, you're just going to pull that like that. And there it comes. There comes the uh, breaker. Now, uh, you know, of course, now I was just showing you how to change a breaker, but this breaker is, is good. There's no reason to replace it. So I'm going to do try to get you a close-up on here is how it's really going to go back in. Just like here, let's move this wire out of the way. There we go. It's going to lock in a little lock right there. And then with some pressure, but not enough to push a car, in this case, I'm just going to use one finger, and I'm gonna push it right in. And there it goes. It just snaps right in. I mean, some do require a little extra pressure, and some really don't. When it requires a lot of pressure, that basically means you have a good connection. If it doesn't, well, then you might want to get a little bit more involved in checking a few things, but really never seen that. Okay, and then back to this wire. And this wire is going to go right back on, and it's got a little slot in there for it to fit in. And then once you put the wire in, then you're going to tighten the screw back down. And I put the wire in the slot, and I tighten it down a little bit. What I want to do, I want to give it a nice little snug turn. You don't want that wire being loose. If this wire was loose, you mean loose as in uh, you could really move with some force, well, that would be bad. It's real important that all your connections are tight. If they're loose, well, you can really make a, a fire and um, not, a good, not a good thing. Now it's going to turn the breaker back on and watch it for a little bit and make sure that it doesn't trip back. If the breaker did trip back, and obviously everything looks good here, well then you need to stop, leave that off, and stop and perhaps even call an electrician to trace out the whole circuit in the house and find out where the short is. Because then obviously it's not here. If the breaker's tripping right away, the short is somewhere else in the house. And you don't want to be going on and off, on and off. Because if, the, if there was a short in the house and you kept on trying to hold that on, well, that short is making something get really hot, sparks, and all kinds of stuff like that. So, very dangerous. All right. Well, now we're all done putting our breaker in. Now we're just going to put our panel cover back on. Now, what I like to do is leave the door open for it. So, when you're going on, you can line it up perfectly. Because you don't want to push any breakers in. Because it's pretty tight. And you don't want to uh, knock any back off and stuff like that. And even here, right on the bottom here. Perfect example. It was tight, and I had to push those breakers in. And again, the same way you took it off. We're going to hold pressure on it, and we're going to just start putting the screws in. Now, these screws are machined screws, and you know what? They don't always go in that easy, just like this one. you got to play with it a little bit, and they should screw in just about all the way by hand. And once they're in, then of course, you know, tighten them back up. Well, I hope you learned how to change a breaker and a little bit about a panel with the electric. Just remember, it's extremely dangerous to start playing with the panel. So when you do it, just be careful. You don't want to touch any metal, basically. The only metal you want to touch is the panel cover. Anything that's metal inside, well, if it's there, it's going to have some current. So just be really careful. It's pretty dangerous. But nice and slow. Take your time. Know what you're doing before you do it. Well, I'm Dominic from AskMeDIY.com. Thanks for watching.